Orchids. Hey, we all love them. They're reliable. Their blooms last a long period of time. They're beautiful. They come in multiple colors. And their name, yeah, comes from the Greek word, get this, the Greek word that means testicle. Did you know though, that there are over 20,000 different varieties or different types of orchids out there? Pretty much almost every country in the world has a native variety of orchid. There are many ones that come in, as I mentioned, different bloom sizes and colors, but even fragrant ones. We saw those in Turks and Caicos, a native fragrant orchid. But out of the 20,000 different varieties, the most common ones you'll find at your grocery store, your garden center for sale, and that are the easiest to grow, are dendrobiums or phalaenopsis orchids. Phalaenopsis, also known as the moth orchid. So if you're looking for the easiest one to grow, it is indeed that phalaenopsis or dendrobium. How do you pick the best orchid for your home? First thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna, of course, look for bloom power. It's not only the flowers, it's the amount of buds. So it's the blooms that are yet to come. If you have any blooms that are starting to fall off, that's an indication that's a little bit older, not an older orchid, but the blooms have been there for an extended period of time. So if you want more bloom power, you look to make sure that they have some buds that are there. Next, what we're going to do is to look to the leaves. We look at the leaves and we look at the color. The color of the leaves doesn't necessarily have to be a deep green. As a matter of fact, you want it to be a lighter green. But on the leaves, we're also looking to make sure that there is no spots, maybe even damaged parts, and especially no sticky substance, because that's a sign of an insect. Now with the roots themselves, you can see these are aerial roots that are sticking out of the top that are here. Those roots, if you just gently touch them, if they're firm, they're fabulous. If they're dry and if they're mushy and or gray, that's a sign of over overwatering or underwatering. We'll talk a little bit about more of that in orchid care. Where is the best location for an orchid inside your home? Sometimes people think you wanna put it right in front of the window, no. It's in a bright room, a room that actually has bright natural light, but is away from a window. The key is, is you wanna keep it away from drafts or any cold temperatures. The other thing that we wanna keep these plants away from are heating vents or fireplaces, anything that's gonna alter the temperature. So a nice bright room away from heating vents or the radiator or the fireplace, beautiful spot for an orchid. Orchids, how often do you water them? What do you water them with? And when is the best time? Okay, first off, you see a lot of marketing out there where they're saying, ah, two icicles per week. Hey, that's the volume of water on a six inch pot. But an orchid natively grows in tropical areas in trees. Okay, in tropical areas, do they have ice cubes for water? No, no. So that's the volume of water. What you wanna water is with room temperature water. So I've already filled up my watering can and I let that stand so that the temperature of that water can then just get right to room temperature. In terms of the volume, as I mentioned, it's just a little bit of water that you're giving them, and that can be once a month to once to twice a month, depending upon how long our daylight hours are. So in the winter, once a month. In the summer, once every other week. They don't need a lot of water. What they do need is humidity. So if you want to have an orchid that thrives in your home, the type of moisture it needs is the moisture in the air. It needs at least 30 to 40% humidity. So adding a humidifier to that room where your orchids is, really great. Another step that you can do is on occasion is you can mist your orchids. So you can mist your orchids on occasion just to put a little bit of moisture on the foliage. Because a reminder, they're in rainforests, in trees. Rainforests are very high humidity. So orchids love humidity, but the other thing in a rainforest is it doesn't have stagnant air. In a rainforest, it has a little bit of air circulation. So orchids will really benefit if you do have some air circulation in your home, either a fan or even if you have a ceiling fan. Put on a low rate of speed, fantastic. So high humidity, a little air circulation, and watering with room temperature water, that's gonna be a happy orchid. Humidity is not only good for the orchid, humidity is also good for you. Uh, that increase of humidity in a home is better for your skin, will improve your breathing, and will make all your plants that much happier indoors. Do they need food? Yes, indeed. Orchids are gonna benefit from having a feeding, but it's a light feeding. You're gonna to wanna to do it either once to twice per month, so every other week. Uh, there are many different orchid foods that are out there, water soluble, which you mix in water. I really like the ease of this one because it's just a plant food mist. So all you're gonna be doing is just misting around the roots and the leaves themselves a couple little sprays, and that's it. You do that once to twice per month, you're gonna have a healthy, happy 
Phalaenopsis or Dendrobrium orchid. What to watch out for? Common mistakes or problems you'll have with your orchid. They always say that our eyes are a gateway to our health, but when it comes to an orchid, the gateway to seeing into the healthy orchid is the leaves and or the roots. So first off, if you take a look at the, the roots of an orchid, and those roots are ones that extend out, they're called aerial roots, what you're looking for is you're looking for a firm, fleshy root that has a slight green color to it. If those roots are gray, and if those roots are feeling and appear to be dry, that's an indication of not enough water. Another indication of that as well is these droopy leaves that you're seeing at the same time. Another thing that you look for the roots though is if the roots themselves appear to be, let's say gray or even mushy and or moldy, that is showing just too much water. So the number one killer of most indoor plants is kindness and too much water. Now with the leaves, on orchid leaves you always want that color to be a little bit of a yellowish to light green tinge. But we also don't want the color of that leaf to be totally yellow, which we can see on that bottom leaf that's there. What we're looking at the leaves as well is any indication of marking or sticky substance. So if we take a look at this orchid, we're seeing that number one, the leaves are drooped. Number two, you can see the leaves are shriveling. We can see indications marking the leaves. And if we look even closer, we can actually see a, mount, a little powdery substance that's there. That powdery substance that's there is indeed mealybug. So with this guy here, we're gonna to need to use a horticultural oil, Bug Be Gone, which is an insecticide, and even using an alcohol swab. Dab that alcohol swab into a little bit of alcohol and just dab it onto the mealybug and that will control it. But the key is, is always look at the leaves. If there's a problem with your orchid, the leaves will tell you the story about what's going wrong. And the number one thing that generally goes wrong with orchids is either too much water or too little water. And anytime that you have a plant that has an insect and or a disease, you don't want it to be close to other plants. So I gotta quarantine. You know that word, quarantine. Good news is they don't need to be repotted that often. It's usually every three years, it, depending upon the variety of orchid that is. But for most common orchids, it's about every three years. Now, when you're repotting an orchid, the key to the success of an orchid, back to where they're grown. In their native home, they're grown in trees in tropical rainforests. And because of that, they're growing on the bark of the tree. So what you'll see when it comes to an orchid soil, you're gonna see a high percentage of bark within that mixture because that really allows the airflow and air circulation around the roots and allows that humidity to stick and stay around the roots as well. So when it comes to orchids, you can't just use a good old potting soil. You need to use a soil formulated for orchids that has a high percentage of bark within it. Now the orchid's finished blooming. You want it to rebloom. How do we get it to rebloom? So there are a couple different options when it comes to an orchid. And first off, when they finish their bloom, it's about the stem and or spike. That's what that thing, that's called that the flowers are on, is the spike. You have the chance or the uh, option to remove that spike totally. So you can go right down to the base, just on top of where the plant is and remove the spike. The other thing that you can do is you can go along the plant and look to a node. And the node are those little bumps that stick out of the side. And we can just prune above that node and that'll actually stimulate some additional growth and stimulate flowers. If you see no nodes on the stem, you're gonna remove that stem totally. After a while, and this is gonna take a, usually a few months before it's gonna send a new spike up, the key is we wanna allow it to dry out a little bit further, we wanna stress that plant a little bit, and we wanna put it in a room where the temperature's a little bit cooler at night. That cooler temperature at night will really help it. The next thing it'll do is it's going to send up some flower spikes. Those spikes, of course, will have the buds that are on, and then that will then move over into those buds starting to swell, and eventually will open. Most orchids can rebloom with ease, and the number one reason why, why people can never get an orchid to bloom is they're just giving it too much water, too much fertilizer, and too much care. That's meaning that the plant focuses on its leaves. If you see an orchid with too deep green of leaves, that's an orchid that's been watered too much, and fertilize too much. So what you're trying to do is cut back on the water, cut back on the fertilizer, cooler nights, and it'll stimulate that new flower spike. Why are orchids better than a bottle of wine? This is how I'm gonna close this off. So a bottle of wine costs about the same price as an orchid. Orchids, they last, their blooms months on end. You can get them to rebloom and you can have that same plant for years. A bottle of wine will give you a hangover, last a night, and sometimes you have some bad decisions. 
So next time, if you're looking at a bottle of wine, maybe buy an orchid. You'll be healthier and you'll be happier. And if you love the information that you saw here and you want to learn more about this plant-loving community, make sure you subscribe and also give us a thumbs up. They also make great housewarming gifts. If you're coming over, you can give me wine too. <laughs>